Welcome to our home. Uh, I am quarantined. And, well, kind of. I still get to go to work, which is, I'm super blessed to be able to do that. But, um, for the most part, I'm quarantined. So, uh, with that, I have been trying really hard not to overwater my plants. Oh, first of all, my name is Luke. I'm one of the twins of Twin Sauce. Welcome to our home. Right now, I'm trying to prune this palm because palms are the bane of my existence. I do have new growth, though. So, this is, I'm convinced to myself that I, we're gonna. You're, gonna, gonna play through. you're learning how to, you're just I'm learning. learning. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, prune. I'm gonna prune you later. Yeah. But to start, introductions. This is a palm I got from my roommate Matthew. He knows I love plants. He knows I wanted this palm. And he went out and got it for me. And he was so, so nice of him to do that. I don't like to prune. Um, I know that it's very, very important, but it is something that I'm terrified to do. This, the first plant you come to, is our fiddly fig. This was a gift from my friend Britt Knoll. Hi, Britt. You are so sweet. And this was a housewarming pr a present from her. I love this fig. The, uh, figs are notoriously. Um, hard to take care of, and they can kind of be um, a little bit detrimental to some people's um, confidence in plant parenthood because uh, they tend to be a little moody. Quick tip, come close, oh. come close. If you have brown spots on the outside of your fiddly fig, it means that it's under watered. It needs some more water. Try more frequent watering, but not too much. Because if you're over watering, the brown spots will actually be on the inside of the leaf, and that means you need to repot because there's root rot. Uh, does that mean you need to prune them or do you need to just... Uh, yeah, I, need, I, I do. I need to prune these too. I should have done that before this video, but you know, full authenticity. There's no going back from that. Like you can't. No. The plant is putting a lot of energy into like healing that leaf, which it can't do. And so it's best to get rid of it so it can actually put energy into new leaves. Um, moving along, I have a very, very old Sansevieria snake plant. I'm not even going to try to say the second half of that word. I am not good with the Latin names, so we're just going to snake plant. Uh, I got this at Lowe's for $12, and I was very excited. It was the end of the season, and he's been really great. I've actually propagated him multiple times and given him away, so that's, that's my sense of area. Um, these were gifts from my friend Adelie. I had two of them. I don't know what happened to one of them. I think I gave one away, but then it's been propagating like a madman, and so I have tried to do that, but I'm, when, the babies are hard to keep alive for a little while because you can't overwater and you can't underwater. It's a little bit of a mess, but once they get going, you can't kill them. That's a propagation of that one. And that's actually another propagation that I could repot, but I'm not going to right now. This has a long story, and I'm very, very excited. This is a pothos. I've been told I say that wrong, and I'm just like, you know what? Okay, old habits die hard. So um, this guy came, I worked at a pool for years, and in that pool, there was a guy who took care of plants, and there was plants around the pool. Now, the plants kept dying because of the chlorine in the air, so I took clippings one Two, I took two clippings of this kind of a pothos, and I have another pothos over there that we'll get to, um, that I took two clippings from. And so all of this came from just two leaves. And it's my favorite thing, is just, and that was maybe three or four years ago that this happened. And so I need to actually clip in, plug some more in, or actually just propagate in for some friends. I know some people who need some pothos, so they're, they're really fun. We'll get to actually some propagations that I have over there. Moving along, right along, this is the bamboo that I always forget about, and I don't ever tell anyone about. And I don't know why, but it's from Ikea, and it just sits in water. And, um... Gross. Yeah. For... How many years have we had that? If we, maybe six? We I, I don't know. I forget about him all the time. an apartment out of college. Yeah, it's been probably six years. This is a tree. This, this tree has a funny story. My friend Jen, her mom had this tree, and it was dying. And so Jen says, you like plants? And this is right after I would just gotten into plants. She was my next-door neighbor. She says... And she just walked in with his plant, like, here. And I was like, oh, okay, this, that, that's great. So I don't even know what this is, but as soon as I got it in my possession, it thrived. And it's grown probably two feet since I've gotten it. And uh, he got some new growth now. That's new. Um, I repotted him several times, and he's just doing great. I guess her mom said it wasn't, like, I think the um, environment wasn't very good. But we've moved to three different locations. And uh, he's obviously doing the best in this location because of all the light. But I've had him also for a long time. He's been one of my older plants. That's one wall. Well, and, yeah. This is my succulent area of the, the house. Um, succulents are a huge misconception in that people think that they're hard to kill, when in reality they're very easy to kill because we don't live in the desert. The majority of us don't live in the desert. So um, the easiest thing to do with a succulent is to forget about them because that's when they will thrive. And that's what I had to do. So to start with, I have this massive aloe vera. And the aloe vera was one of my first plants, not my first plant, but one of my first plants. And it was just a tiny little thing from Ikea that my mom bought for me when I was graduating with my undergrad in 2000. 15, I think, yeah. And um, I potted it, 
and then it just exploded. And I don't know what I did. One of the things that I do know about, um, about especially aloe vera, is you have to water it heavily and then let it dry out, and then water it heavily, and then let it dry out. Like, give it a good dose of water. If anyone has any tips, I know Paul said that his old boss would tell him to chop off the top of it and just repot that part, and that terrifies me because it is one of my oldest plants, but if that's what I need to do, I just need somebody to tell me or to come help me. Moving along to my actual succulent terranium, this is a gift from my friend, Zach. So inside here actually is a lot of different succulents from different parts of my life. This area is just so much fun for me because there's so many stories. Um, this is actually a grandchild of my first plant ever, and my friend Adelie gave me a little baby succulent in this pot. It was just this big, and this is actually babies from that one that maybe are generations old. I think some of these are from Mother's Day at Church of the Four Quarters. They yeah. had like, they had yeah. like succulent. That's that this moms. one. Uh, my friend had an event and they had like succulents as their centerpieces. So she brought me a ton of them. And many of these are still from that, that event as well. Yeah. And then this was, there's gifts from like, this was in Newsies a year ago and he's <laughs> blown up. Thanks Madison. And then Steven and Anna got us those plants and they've blown up. Um, yeah, the, again, the thing is, is that you need to understand you can kill them, but if you forget about them and just water them a little bit every once in a while, they thrive. Um, these succulents here are actually really, really cool. Um, these I got from my friend Jess's wedding. She had them as decorations and they were live. And she, when I was leaving the wedding, she said, will you take some of these so that you can keep them alive? So now whenever Jess comes over, she can see her, her plants from her wedding. This one's that one of hers too from the wedding. Just really, really cool to see those thriving in my in my apartment. Another gift from Jess is this, I think it's a Pila? I don't even know. But we tried to propagate it and it's it's doing very well though. We, we're, we're happy with how it's doing. Now moving to my plant shelf. This is actually, oh, don't forget Frozen 2. Oh, Frozen 2. Frozen 2. We like Disney. These are our roommate Matthews. Um, and he wanted to get the Frozen 2 Legos because those might never come back. You know, you gotta get them while you got them. So. We, they are on display here. Oh, Hogwarts is on top. Matthew got us that for our birthday too. We're Lego fans, we do like our Legos. This is the other um, pothos from my original clippings from the pool. Uh, it is a different kind. You can see it's a little more bushy and less viney than the other one. So uh, the, the, the leaves are a little tighter together. They kind of stick up instead of down. Um, I really, really like this one. It took me a long time to actually figure out what to do with this guy because I didn't really know what what to do with him but i really do like him and he's getting to a point now where he looks majestic and, and long here's some propagations that i have going of those pothos this is the actual okay don't don't hurt me disney but this is a this is a pothos that paul snagged for me from epcot because that was the one thing i paul went to disney last christmas and i said do one thing for me and will you snag me a clipping of a pothos from epcot or a viney plant i didn't care what kind something that would propagate and he did he brought me this and so now Listen, I want, listen, I found it on the ground. Um, I have two jades here. Uh, this came from a garage sale, but it was a friend of mine, Adelie, got this for me from a garage sale. It was this big. I forgot about it last summer in my window, in my room, and I just watered it when I watered everything else. And now he's huge and has multiple stems coming up. I don't know what I did. I just do. Oh, you missed this one. Oh, Alrighty. that is what that is one of my first plants uh, ever. Other than that little succulent, this was the second plant I got. Um, with it was a, a group package, and I got it and a prayer plant and some moss and something else. There was a four pack at Price Chopper. I got it for Paul because he was in Mary Poppins, and I didn't want to get him dying flowers. So I said, "Well, I'll just get you a plant because that's much more responsible of me." No, I really just wanted the plants to, because I was, bit the bug, I guess. And uh, so I got it and then I separated them out. This is the only one that's still alive from that. The prayer plant lasted a long time, but I think that I just didn't know how to take care of it and eventually it just kind of died. The moss and the other one didn't last at all. But he's my, one of my first plants. He's looking a little sad and I need to prune him too. That's another project for today. But regardless, uh, he is one of my first ones and I have propagated him. He's all over. I have my aunt in Iowa has one. My sister has one. My mom has one in Colorado. He's all over the place. He's, he's a mess. So cool. Moving down this. Oh, this is, is this a propagation of him? It is not. This is actually, um, two Christmases ago. Um, we were decorating for Christmas at work at the coffee shop I work at and they were like, Oh, we don't want these plants in here during while well, the Christmas season. So I just took them and then I never took them back. Okay. Moving down. Actually, here's another one of those plants. That's this one. This one also came from Split Log that we just didn't give back. But we, Simeon didn't really like that one. So he, he said that I He's could. He's kind of so. yellowing. Yeah, I need to prune him too. So. This is propagations from my aloe vera. This is, actually, this has funny story to it. 
please excuse. This is a Chemex that I was propagating things in and now I don't have anything to propagate in it. This, as you can tell, is a Christmas cactus, um, very simply. This is a, I don't, there's different names for different kinds of Christmas cactuses, but this one's pink and this one's actually white. But the, the flowers that they, that they bloom, but you can tell the difference in the leaves. For a long time I didn't realize I had two different kinds of, uh, of Christmas cactus in here because this one was an original plant from my mom. It was just took forever for it to grow. I, when I was in Vancouver for work, Two years ago, um, a nurse gave me um, a clipping of this kind of Christmas cactus, White one, yeah. and I just shoved it in the ground when I got home and forgot about it. And then just recently, this Christmas, my mom pointed out, there's two different kinds of Christmas cactuses in there. And then I realized that propagation had just exploded all over this half of the pot. This one came from my friend Linda German, all the way from my, through my mom. And this one came from a nurse in Vancouver, Canada. How cool is that? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> This is uh, moving down here. I've got a foster plant for my friend Adelie. I love this. Yeah, this is a this is a different kind of jade tree um, than these jades up here, but this is one of my favorite kind. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. I just love it so much. This is a cactus for my friend Jess. These you can literally snap off in the middle of the cactus and you just shove it back in the ground and it'll just start growing just right away. Uh, this is a gift for my friend Adelie. It's just a piece of moss that's growing. And then this, is a clipping from my friend Linda Hobbs. And Linda is just a dear old friend. And I went over to her house a long time ago and got a bunch of clippings. She gave me a bunch of snake plants uh, that I've now actually given away to people or propagated and given away. Um, and this is actually what they call a moon. Um, so it's like a moonflower plant, but it only blooms at night and it will it'll bloom at night like once a year and but only when it gets big enough so it's not quite big enough but it is going crazy and i've had it for probably four years and for about two years it didn't do anything it just the propagation sat in the ground it didn't die but it just sat there and then we moved in, we moved into this apartment and it just took off it was a different different species so i'm really hoping that it gets big enough and i want to repot it in a bigger pot, uh, pot and hopefully it gets big enough and bushy enough that it'll actually bloom this year i would love to see it bloom but i think it's actually native to china from what the research I've seen. And also it was in Crazy Rich Asians, that scene where they're at the grandma's house and there's a blooming flower, that's that's this plant. That's all I have for you guys today. Uh, that's all the plants I have right now, actually. That's, that's everything I have. I wanted to make this video not only for the people who ask me all the time about what plants I have, but also for myself, because I wanted to do this video once every spring so I know what I have and how they've grown over the last year, kind of a documentation of, of, my, of my plant life thus far. So thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. Um, if you liked this and made it this far, <laughs> give us a like and comment plant mom in the, in the comments below so that I know you actually watched the end of the video. We'll talk to you guys in another video real soon. Don't die. Okay, bye.